that is going to help many people. That is not the topic of the day today. The topic of the day today, viewers, is Cameroon. The people of Cameroon for almost, but before I go that side, because when I start, I will not stop. Let me first introduce my panel this afternoon. Linda Alela, our, our own in-house analyst, crew, anchor, call you each every name, reporter, and our senior reporter, Samuel Tawish, who is back on the train, on the train, on the train that has left the, with the new offering of new horizon. Towards the 26th of October, we shall be there crossing the river. What has happened to Red Sea? <laughs> Welcome back, Tawish. Thank you. We want us to go deep and see what is ailing Africa. We want to take this show very seriously about Matsanga Africa perspective. It's the only show that we speak with frankness, with every calculative, we are decisive. We are very, what can I tell you? Matanga Africa perspective, therefore, wants to show the people of Africa that we cannot keep quiet about the ills of foreign instigated chaos. Cameroon is a, a colony of the British, of the French. The French have maintained grip on Cameroon. But in Cameroon, there are several other ethnicity difficulties that are cropping up. One, the people of some English-speaking people of Cameroon. As my panel will tell you, yesterday was their Independence Day. They have declared, they, they have, in fact, the Cameroonians said bye-bye to Mr. Beer. Well, they have had enough. They are forced to speaking French. They must be assimilated. They must eat frogs, which they don't eat. French eat frogs, you know that. That's why they say, oh, Ben, you, Ben, you. <laughs> they eat frogs. Now, some of the in Cameroonians are not interested in frogs. They are interested in meat and chicken. Give them the chance. But President Beer has refused. So yesterday they declared their own state, a state of their own. And I want you Cameroonians, wherever you are now, Paul, come back. I've come back on your subject. I have done it in Gambia. Mr. Ad Adama Barrow is ruling, is leading. Although he's now leaning more of the French advice, he will be overthrown very soon. Because he has forgotten where he came from. It is our television station that gave the Gambians the will to speak, the will to talk, the will to do everything in the world. Yaya Jamia had closed everything for them, we opened the channels for them. Most of them have never even sent one card, Gambians, one card to our television station to say thank you. Now you are eating. The plate will be removed. Then you look for us. Again, now let's start Cameroon. Cameroon has had problems. Problems brought about by bad leadership. Mr. Beer has been in power for 38 years or so, ruling a country with a grip, very tough hands, dictatorial tendencies that every African seem to have. Even if village chiefs in Africa, when you give him two powers for two consecutive terms, he wants the fourth one. It is not, I think it is because we took from the colonial master, public of Uganda, our country, oh my God. We have come from very far. And that's when we advise, we give advice, like I'm doing here on the question of conflict. Listen to me. Listen to us. Cameroon. My panel will discuss, we shall look at what ails Africa in terms of Cameroon, reaching a point where the president of Cameroon does not want to see his own people, closing schools, forcing them to talk English, blocking lawyers to go to court, blocking doctors, blocking medical treatment for English-speaking people. Mr. Beer, 
What else do you want? A revolution? Of course. It will come. It might take time, but it will come. You won't control people more than that. You might use a repressive hand, Mr. Beer. But if you don't listen to the people, what they want to say, they are saying it. They say they are English-speaking people with their own republic. I don't want to pronounce the word, but my panel will do so. The republic is well now demarcated. The Amazonia. Where? Southern Sud Cameroon is now called Amazonia. They want to go away. Don't stop them. You, because you have discriminated them yourself. And I like the Biafran issue, which we know is, 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 is pumped in by fuel, oil. Actually, this one also is oil. Because the southern part is the one that produces more oil than... You see how God makes things very difficult. You see, the, the place that are minority, the, 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 the southern part, where beer wants so much, is where the black gold is. So beer there says he, die, he rather dies there fighting than giving them independence. Yesterday, they declared Independence Day of Southern Cameroon, Amazonia, which was received by the government, deployed security forces who killed at least 80 people were killed yesterday and several other people hospitalized. October 1st marks the anniversary of 1961 uh, joining amalgamation of the two, the South, Southern Cameroon and this French-speaking Cameroon. There has been clampdown in the Southwest region from Friday morning to Monday morning, which entails a curfew, which takes effect from 9 p.m. up to the morning. The closure of sea and the land borders. Suspension of transport for the English-speaking people. Public meetings of, of more than four people not allowed. Mr. Bia, you are in trouble. We are coming for you. Cameroon is split between English and French-speaking. Those in the English-speaking place have nothing to say. They have nothing to eat. They can't go to school. They can't have telephone services. They can't have internet services. They can't have banking services. Oh my God! That is an old stone-aged ruler by name Paul Beer. What started as a movement in 1961 for a greater rights has turned into a demand for independence for the English-speaking people. The French-speaking Cameroonians have dominated the entire logistics of the whole Cameroon. The oil exportation, despite the oil being in the southern part of Cameroon, they have taken over the, the entire system of exporting the oil, the proceeds coming to keep Mr. Bia in power. No roads, no schools, no hospitals, no infrastructure in the southern part of Cameroon because they speak English. So, the Anglophone minority has long complained about this disparity sharing out Cameroon's oil. I told you. And that is when I bring in my panel, I'm going through the whole paper, so that when I bring in the panel, let's chant this, let's chant this. Let's look at what, what else. Are you Kenya, in Kenya, not leading to this, Mr. Tawish? Don't you think we are heading there? Somebody in Lodwa, somebody in Trukana, is saying we should not talk about our, the, 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 some armed people, what are they doing in the oil place? Why is it that two, over 2,000 NGOs of French speaking people sponsored by the French government within that area of Rangoya Malakwet, that peninsula going up to Turkana? What are they doing there? What wrong has Kenya done? The same problem is in Cameroon. The oil proceeds are not shared. Don't forget the only minister that Mr. Raila Odinga has been involved in at the Ministry of Energy Roads. Have you ever seen him involved in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? He can't, can't manage it. Yes, energy. And it is him who brought this petroleum discovery. Remember, you have forgotten Triton. 
Remember? Eh. Hey. So I'm bringing a few things. You, as we speak about Cameroon, let's trace back. Is not this thing also coming here? Why is Mr. Divani not extradited back to, re, to, to, to Nairobi? So that he tells us where those billions were, went. It's because of Raira is still here. Eh? Hey? Muse, kama wanashika nyoka watu watambia watu ubiti yote. Nyumba hizo so, uh, wengi. Watu wengine wanalala kwa manyumba ya da, divani huko. Eh? Hey? Is there a property asset? Re, uh, as, uh, what is it called? Recovery. Mr. Divani's account was frozen. Where did the money go? Who took it? These are some of the things we shall not ask today, but I think it will, it will wish you follow it up. Because this, this is a good story that can take us to BBC or, for, or CNN so that they, we can tell a story why Mr. Divani is seated right intact in London. And yet he stole billions of money of shillings, yeah. Who's behind him? See the French. I told you. You, you run international relations, you'll enjoy. French. They have told someone, don't touch. God this if you were a commoner, that boy would have been here already the committee being touched by some men uh, unnecessary men around there. <laughs> so thank you very much. Let's go back to Cameroon. This country has suffered. The minority English-speaking people have suffered. All what they are saying, they just want a, to go away. That's what they want. They just want their own state. How Bia can do this is now a miracle. That the, the, the calls are becoming louder and louder worldwide. Most of them are campaigning seriously. The type of killings. The type of Kandoya, Kandoya tying back, people busting their chests, the killings, the torture, the photographs that we see, the police brutality. You see when people just dance a bit in a hostel here, the whole Kenya is on fire. But in Cameroon, they put you in mud. You roll until you become mad. You saw those pictures? This is what Mr. Bia's police is doing to the people of Cameroon. So... Of, of southern Cameroon. So what they want, the English speaking people are saying they have had enough. They want to go. The panel also will look at is President Paul Robia in alliance with the French colonialists? If so, are there people in Africa who are working with former colonial masters to dismember this continent? That in, put it in that larger perspective. The Mogani Changrai Eh? The karma of Frelimo. He is fighting Frelimo as we speak. Some parts of northern Mozambique, you can't walk there. Morgan Changara in, in Zimbabwe, he's killed that country. He's still struggling. He wants now even people to come on the streets. Thanks God the Zimbabwean people don't joke. They have told him enough is enough. Mugabe will go down to earth where God wants him to go as a president, not a former president. Our place in Uganda, basically, the same. If you follow a lot of his funding and where he gets his money is from the French. But now President Museveni seems to have done a quick deal and appeased the French by giving them total oil, all proceeds, and, and, and made them happy. They seem to have abandoned Mr. Besige. In Kenya here, the same. You see the first place where people, until Mr. Raira touched Oto, Mofo, Safaran. Safran, is it? Oh, yeah. Safran is already in oil belly. Yesterday they contacted me to be on standby. So if you don't see me here, I've gone to, to bring the historical perspective of my comrade. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I like writing most. But this, this saffron is in court in oil belly for defamation. They, they, this is a, a high company that touches intelligence networks, that works for CIA, American companies, NASA, 
people going to the moon, saffron, so it cannot fabricate. You can't just label them like that and they leave you. They will use every coin until they get hold of your, the, them, of you, and get you. So is the President Bia working in alliance with them? Yes. The Cameroon crisis is having an impact on the city's economic life. Schools have been closed. Since students have not enrolled, some schools have been touched, you know, destroyed. Teachers have been let to go there since there is no salary to pay them. Should the government and the communities of South East and North West hold a dialogue to preserve peace? Is a session the best option to resolve the Cameroonian crisis? Putting that in its perspective, the Kenyan scenario, where Mr. Where Dr. D is also requesting for cutting himself from the rest of... You saw placards today. At, at, have you seen placards showing the Republic of Kenya? People's Republic of Kenya. Did you see that? With Orengo and, uh, and Orengo as the president of the Republic of... Have you seen that is going, is here? Is coming here? Who is trying to do this? So those are the areas that we want to see. It's a session, the best option to resolve the Cameroonian crisis. Thank you very much, viewers. Let me turn to my panel. My panel of two people. I will begin with Tawish. Your views, you have heard. We have been here before. You and I, we have hammered this topic down. Af, what do you think could be, can be done now? Well, first of all, I think, uh, Dr. Tari and the viewer, one thing that we need to underscore is a government that oppresses her people, a government that marginalizes her people, a government that does not listen to the uh, pleas or the woes that affect our people is not worth being in place. It's not worth a government. And therefore, looking at what has been happening in Cameroon, uh, it's been a considerable period of time now, and with all those calls, especially from the Anglophones, that they needed attention, especially from President uh, Paul Beer. But he's not been coming forth. He's not been listening to their, uh, to their woods. And I think it's just time, because if President Paul Beer was eager or had that heart to sit down and listen to the problem that is affecting these people, uh, maybe we would have gotten a solution by now. And it's gotten to uh, that desperate level, and I suppose even the people of uh, Southern Cameroon, the Anglophones, may not have really wanted this to be the last uh, the option, but now because that, uh, President Bolbia and his allies are not listening to them anymore, they have chosen that as the last option, and I think probably according to them, that is, not, that is what is going to work for them. Because if at all the oil is produced from the Southern Cameroon, and the people of that place actually are disenfranchised, they feel like they are not benefiting out of whatever natural resources that are coming out of their own uh, land. It's benefiting some other people, more so people, people who are not even Cameroonians themselves, people from outside Cameroon. Uh, you talked about the issue of the, uh, the, 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 the French. So they are, they are basically justified to call for this session. That is my own thinking, and I think the world should come out and support this move by the Southern Cameroonians to secede and have an independent state of their own so that they can now run their own affairs. I think, to me, that is the best option so far, because it is apparent our uh, President Paul Bia is not going to listen to them anymore. It's been quite some time, and he's not been listening to them. You got it? Got it. Yes. And I think that... Uh, from picking it from there. Let's, let's enjoy this topic. Yeah. Cameroonians, yeah. wherever you are, enjoy. Talk, pick a point. Call more. We shall read it all out in the names of people who are contributing, who are giving us more light on the subject of Cameroon. We want to thank you so much for being there with us and we are back here with you. As a Pan-African station, we won't allow you to go down without us saying it. Our role is to expose the problem to AU, to African Union, European Union, United Nations. Time has run out to the Commonwealth. The English people must stand up, the British government the Her Majesty, the Queen, must stand up to defend the people of Southern Cameroon who are marginalized because they speak English. Yes. All right, of course, uh, you...
So you have already given us a great overview, but now I'm looking at a different perspective on this question of South and Cameroon. Yes. It is quite a sad state in the country, and I think today uh, we were talking, uh, power play, we were talking about uh, Spain, you know, and Catalonia has officially been given a green light away from Spain, from Spain in uh, what's the term of association. Of course, they underwent the uh, processes, the constitutional processes, and finally, they are a state of their own. And we kept on asking ourselves whether this could be recipe to disaster, uh, uh, you know, gauging, uh, t- touching on some of of the examples that we had uh, from Sudan and the likes, and um, what Cameroonians are asking for, you know, it has gone overboard. We talked about this, I think that since the first time I stepped foot uh, in Africa TV, sometimes last year, of course, we started in, uh, sometimes November, you know, these calls started so to be so heavy in uh, November 2016, I believe, and up until today. And for the very first time, we say that, you know, in the event that uh, Bia is not going to hit to the calls of the South and Cameroonians, you know, this is going to escalate to be trouble. And we've seen that demonstrations are now not from the South and Cameroonians alone. Demonstrations are there, you know, being held by government supporters again. So what do you expect of such demonstrations in the event that these two gr- groups that are clashing meet on ground and they are all demonstrating? Yes. Some in support and others against. Yes. What is expected? Then so there the, seems to it, be this. It has spread. It has spread all over. Yes, there seems to be yes. peaceful demonstrations. And, and, and Dr. I don't know whether this would, be sound, uh, would sound absurd, but I would love to understand what is the take of the opposition on ground? What is the take of these human rights commissions that I, I normally you know? We've seen them in Kenya. We've seen how vocal they are. Sometimes we say that, you know, they're being backed by external forces. What would be the take of the opposition in South and Cameroon? Are they in agreement with what Paul Bia is doing? And Paul is saying, in the event that the opposition is in agreement with the government, you know very well that there is trouble. So if they are not in agreement, what are they doing to actually help out? Because then again, all these calls for reforms sometimes are very achievable if you get backup from opposition, if you get backup from human rights commissions. Where, why is it that it becomes a fight of the Southern Cameroonians alone as opposed to getting other backups, you know, or maybe backups from different people, of human rights people? We are calling upon the United Nations. We are calling upon the African Union. But what are these groups, the NGOs that are on ground, you know, that seek to... Uh, to, to give the rights to human uh, you know, to human beings, you know, like this is your right, you're supposed to get it and all that. They fight uh, for the rights of these people. Are they fighting enough? Are they not fighting? What could be the problem? And hence the question of whether the French is actually uh, or in co-host with the, uh, President Paul Bia. Okay. As we speak now, with some breaking news coming in, just United States Ambassador to Kenya has said Mr. Raila Odinga should be warned seriously. Don't undermine IEBC with unrealistic demands. We are watching. Stop the violence or pay heavily. That is Ambassador Godek news that has just come in and is flying as we speak. Therefore, I told you in the morning that the, the angle is tilted because he insulted the people who came who saw the peaceful lining queuing, voting, no violence, they went. Transmission brought a problem. Nobody from this other side, apart from a few babs that have cooled it down, mm. nobody is insulting the observers. Mm. The, the first thing, if you're in a struggle, which Raira should have known, that the first thing in your life, in a struggle, when you are struggling, there are two things that you have to do. Mm-hmm. Be a friend of international community. That is what I've learned in my 32 years of exile. Mm. The best friend is the international community. Once you insult them, then you are nowhere. They will turn on you. So be a friend of the international community and keep the international community on your side. But when you start saying they are bogus, they are, it is some of the words that were used. Don't defeat international statesmanship if you become a president of Republic of Kenya. Let's move away from Kenya because everything we shall have it in the other uh, section of Matanga's take. Let's stick to Cameroon. African Union, United Nations have seen this misery, especially the AU. They have seen all this happening. What have they done? What do you think they can do? What should they do, Mr. Tawish? Yes, the story, uh, more often we have talked about uh, the United Nations and more so the African Union. Uh, is it really a toothless dog? It, can it, can't it bite? Because we are looking at what has been happening in Cameroon and it's been happening for a long time now. But we are not seeing them coming out clearly to even attempt to condemn whatever is happening. 
not even in by action, even by just having a press conference to condemn what is happening mm. in Cameroon. So looking at the leadership and the leadership of the African Union, it begs a lot of questions as to really why they are silent on this matter. Because again, you cannot uh, argue that maybe you are waiting to get to another level. Already it, is, it has ex escalated. It, the situation has worsened already to a point that we would have gotten the attention by now. They would have, been re they would have responded a long time ago, but they are silent on the matter. Uh -huh. So I suppose, as it is today, we cannot sit down and continue watching uh, the Southern Cameroonians or the Anglophones being killed uh, by maybe the forces that are now being ordered by Paul Beer. Because again, the forces cannot kill the ordinary people without, uh, an, order. The, uh, without the, an order from the president. Mm, yes. So I suppose then, this is the time the UN and uh, the African Union has to come out boldly and speak for the people who are now voiceless, who are actually, they have been stifled, they can't even speak. Because even the avenues, the avenues uh, upon which they could maybe even air their grievances have been mm -hmm. closed down, have been clamped. Mm -hmm. So they cannot even speak. I heard uh, Linda Lela say that uh, where are the NGOs? Mm -hmm. Paul Beer cannot even allow these NGOs to operate there mm -hmm. because they will be talking about the ills that is committing. The, on the guy has the opposition yeah. 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 In the yeah. 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 opposition prides in the shortfalls of the government. Yeah. In this state, uh, is there no opposition that uh, would there react is, to of this? Of course, the opposition, if it is there, yeah. it is also a lot of submerged by the fact the that of yeah. French yeah. speaking Franco people. Yeah. Yeah. If there is a pseudo opposition yeah. claiming to be fighting for the rights yeah. of, of the people of South And maybe it's an extension of the government mm -hmm. it is an by this guy. <laughs> yes. So that's the problem probably yeah, we could yeah, be yeah, having yeah. in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because why again are they silent on mm -hmm. this? Yeah. Much as uh, you look at maybe for example in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, it's a, vi a vibrant democracy where you can see opposition, opposition leaders come leaders, out yeah. and talk about the government and condemn some of uh, some of the acts by the government. But that is not happening in, in southern Cameroon. Are you trying to tell us, for instance, uh, that maybe these people cannot speak for their people? Because or is it that we are having an extension of uh, a government extension mm -hmm. in the name of an opposition mm -hmm. that is not uh, that is silent on uh, the acts that are being committed mm -hmm. on the people of? or the Anglophones in mm -hmm. Cameroon. All right. So we, so in nutshell, mm -hmm. hey, it's, it's toothless. It is, but, but I don't really think so, because <laughs> I think what they have chosen to don't do... Don't you think there is what a to do? Let me yes. charge and a Cameroon, mm. a neighbors. Chad has sent troops in North Niger Nig Nigeria, Nigeria to quell Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. Cameroon has sent troops on the eastern flank border of Nigeria, Nigeria. To, 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 to curb the insurgency of mm -hmm. Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the Chad is also a neighbor of Cameroon. Why is the Secretary General of, of the Air, the chairperson of AU, mm -hmm. Mr. Mahat, Muhammad, Muhammad Haki. Faki. Faki or Haki? Mm -hmm. well, I don't like to hear that. Name. <laughs> that that guy just snatched the thing from us. Yeah. If it was Ambassador Amina Mohammed, we would have told her already to summon the AU extraordinary summit to discuss his ever-ending secession uh, call that is brewing in Africa. Mm -hmm. You see that there is a yeah, second repartitioning of Africa. Mm. Biafra, Cameroon, Dr. Ndi, eh? soon there was the Renzuru who were crushed. Museveni does not take any, any, any soldiers, no prisoners, because Uganda has no room for prisoners. Mm. He crushed those. Nothing came out. Those who tried can never try again. Now, if we are having this secession policy oh, yeah. that is being planted in for the sake of areas of oil, of oil, the gold, the black gold, Tawish, the black gold, the black gold is the one killing us. Yeah. Why can't the AU call for a summit? Well, Natari, I think there's one thing I, need, I want to concur with you. When you said that uh, AU is a toothless dog, they cannot bite. And there's one aspect I need us to understand, and also the viewer. The reason why the AU is not responding to the issues happening in Cameroon, probably because they are listening to their master. Who is the master of the AU? That is the question. Mm. Because again, there was a time we discussed about AU and who is funding AU. The French. Mm -hmm. And if the who French, is funding ICC? The, the French are the not, French. They have not given hey. Who is funding given... the Total Oil, the conference of yeah. AU? Yeah. The French. So the French have not given a cue to mm -hmm. AU to intervene mm -hmm. in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where the problem mm -hmm. is. Call us on plus two five four seven nine five six three eight one four five. This topic.
is interesting. Wherever you are in Africa, in Europe, Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, South, Australia, New Zealand. What is the capital city of New Zealand? <laughs> Wellington. You told us. Uh, I told, told you. Like, you told me last it. time. Yeah. This is an African. We better learn right. I right remember. I gave you an exercise. You did. You did. Me 20 <laughs> names of each country. You don't, don't worry. Just ask me. I'll tell you. Pista. Yeah? Yes, Afghanistan, Kabul. No. All right. <laughs> Guys, tell me. Everything is in here. So, look here. What is going on must be brought to the attention of the international community. Yeah. The United Nations are watching. The basic human rights that are being committed, the human rights that are being committed, abuses in, in Cameroon. Stu people are not going for schools. Students are not going to school. Mm -hmm. Ch teachers are not being paid. No internet, no banking, no money transfer, no lawyers, no court hearings. This is it. We have a caller. Yeah. First caller. And all that coupled with the massive killings. We of massive innocent, killings innocent of civilians. the younger yeah. generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The youth mm -hmm. who are trying just to say, don't kill us. You see? Hello? Hello, good morning, or good afternoon, whatever you are. I can't hear you. Hello? I hear you, but that, that, it is our technical department. Uh, let's see. Just hold on. I'm calling from USA. Can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you now, Blauda. We don't have any any arms. 
we are peaceful people and we are calling on peaceful resolution of okay. this problem. Okay. What President Yes. Okay, thank you very much. In a one final word, in a one sentence, what do you want the international community to do? Oh, it's cut off. Thank you. You have heard that uh, the internet was cut off yesterday after 91 days without internet. No money transfer. They put a wrong, sorry to catch you, they put a wrong number there. It's not uh, 63, plus 2547985145. Yes. That is the number that you should be calling. Which number is that one now again? Yes. Right. Yes, sir. Nine seven. What's your name? You are calling from where? Where are you calling from? From the United Arab Emirates in Dubai. Yes, from Dubai. Tell us more about Cameroon. What do you want to be done for Cameroon? What do you say? Do you want to to get your own state? Do you want to remain in Cameroon? Do you want adjustments? What did you say about the human rights abuses that we have read about that uh, are being committed in Cameroon, South, Southern Cameroon? Well, I am really surprised at the action of the international community because this is really this is something that we have never imagined that can happen in this era of uh, time. We just get that instruction from it where people come and stand and make speeches, speeches which have never taken people to any place. Presidents come and make speeches. The president of Cameroon came and made a speech in front of a bear, bear hall, and that doesn't seem to bother anyone. Every year. A number of people have been killed in this country in the past two days. If you see the images, the images are really, really. Very bad. A lot of gore, like bloody images. And the guy is in his hotel room in Switzerland. He doesn't bother what's happening. Yesterday, the people are declaring independence not because they want, but because they don't have any choice. If you look at the protests of the last two weeks, what happened during the UN summit, you will discover that most of thousand Cameroonians are out of the country, intellectuals, doctorate degrees, PhDs. And yet, you don't have any appointments from these people. You get people who are old and sick and infirm. These are the ministers and these are the senators. We don't know what we, we have done. Okay. All right. Thing. Your problem is the international community. It has not reacted. And the people, human rights are being uh, 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 abused in, in Cameroon. And that is the problem of most of the callers and the viewers who are watching us. Thank you very much, calling from uh, Dubai. Continue watching Punchline Africa TV. We shall always speak without fear or favor. But Mr. Beer, people are crying. Take something, take a step, change some things for the better of your country. Yes. Uh, there's uh, one thing that is coming out very clear and loud from the people of uh, Cameroon, especially the Anglophones. They're saying, and they're very specific. One, they want the intervention of the international community, more so the UN. Second, it's nothing less of secession. They want a country of their own. They want their own independence. They want, they want their own state. So I think those are two key things that are coming out, and most of them are actually uh, so categorical about those specific issues. Hello. Unless you have proper backup. We have another caller. Uh, Hello, 86 is where? Somewhere in Asia? Yeah, I'm calling from China. Uh, China. China, I knew it. Yes, China, in Asia. Thank you very much. Can you talk to us now? Okay, no problem. Yeah, what is your contribution to this topic of Cameroon? Okay, actually, where do I start? I mean, uh... Anyway, I would like to uh, reiterate that there is uh, a United General Assembly Resolution 68 that already that already uh, grants independence 
in the southern Cameroon state. And what I would like to directly and clearly and simply tell the international community, especially the United Nations, is for her to correct her mistake, to fix her mistake and implement this policy that already grants independence to the state of southern uh, Cameroon. So, I don't want to go on to rant about the history because a lot of people already know about what has happened from 1961 until today. So, this resolution alone already grants independence to the state of southern Cameroon. You and said the resolution, community. resolution uh, 16? 08, 1608. 1608 of the United Nations Security yeah. Council. Yes, United Nations General Assembly, General Assembly. Resolution 1608. 1608, which year was this resolution? That was done in, uh, yeah, 1961. 1961. April 1961. Okay. 1961, April 1961. Okay. So, this, this document is available and it has been paraded online for, for the past months and everybody knows about it. The United Nations simply needs to implement this policy and we won't go into any bloodshed. Everything would be peaceful. Okay. Thank you very much, brother. Continue watching our television station. As you know, we are the only okay, proudest people much who have kept the spirit and come up to show some illness of Africa. Africa is ill, ill of people seeking this, seeking that, because of the French expansionist fury of going to get more territories to earn more diamonds. Central Africa is gone. The whole Central Africa is diamond looting spree. Trains and planes and everybody is carrying. This is exactly what is taking place. 97 again in Dubai. How are you from Cameroon? What's your name? Hello? Sorry, we missed that one. Tawishi, you are saying? Uh, I mean, whatever, what I was trying to echo is that what I was trying to echo is that the people of Cameroon are coming out very and uh, saying that uh, they want the intervention of the international community. And you've heard them speak about, about the UN and also asking the African Union to try and, and intervene on the situation in uh, Cameroon. Another thing that they're coming out loud and clear is that they want cessation and nothing less of cessation. Because now it seems like they are completely tired of uh, BS rule because it's not been listening to their woes, it's not been listening to their pleas, and therefore the only solution to their problems is actually secession so that they can have a country of their own. And I think they need to be listened to. Okay. Your last word? And they are coming on board with grievances and trying to say that, you know, moving forward, constitutionally, this is the route we should take. And if the president himself is not coming to say that, you know, what, well, despite all, uh, this is the route that we should take. The only thing that he's saying is that we should do dialogue. Dialogue with the people that you're killing. Dialogue that, with the people that you're marginalizing. Then clearly you're not offering a solution as the president. Then what would be the other option? The other option is to try the solution of this other party who's equally a shareholder on this whole affair. And of course, the solution is we need a referendum. Pretty simple. By the Constitution, according to the Constitution, guided by the Constitution, allowed and mandated by the Constitution. If you give us that, if we win, if, if we, uh, win fine. If we do not, if we lose, then well and good. We give us a solution. Mm -hmm. A solution. Your final word, Tawish? Yeah. I think, um, you see, what Bia has been doing is not worth the government. Because this is a kind of a government which is eating mm -hmm. her own people. Fully looking at the atrocities, the killings. Uh, the maiming of the people, the innocent civilians, and also denying them the basic of their rights. For instance, even going to schools or hospitals or even the internet and the freedom just to speak about whatever they are going through. They have been denied that opportunity. They have been denied that freedom. So my only take is that we need the international community to intervene. Where is, why is the AU silent on this matter? They need to come out clearly and intervene on this situation. Already like it is now, the situation has escalated, is no return. And it's like uh, Paul Bia is determined to continually clamp these people, any voice of dissent to clamp them down. 
So I think it's only incumbent upon the AU to come out, as well as the international community, mm -hmm. the United Nations, come out and help uh, the situation the in Cameroon. I think the Cameroonians have spoken, they have said, you know, it is not secession, it is a restoration. Thank you very much for correcting us. Many of you said no referendum is not necessary because they will manipulate it. They just want resolution 1608. That one will never go away from my head. Thank you very much, Cora. And the one uh, I'm so depressed, depressed, God help us. This is Eric. Eric. Talk with Stella, no referendum. Najenje Bema, we need freedom from the hands of the La Republic de Cameroon. Uh -huh. It is a restoration, not secession. Mr. Allah Afu. Arrestation, arresting are still going on in Cameroon. And young Dan, we just want to restore our independence. Fanta Dab still killing now as we speak. Mr. Bia, you are still killing people. LSC has no legal document to be there. We can't even watch TV. We bought our, our own money. Can't borrow bros on our phones without being arrested. Jomi gone well. Thank you very much. If the situation is bad, even if browsing in Cameroon is a crime. Total restoration. Teje as a Judy Zayin. Yes, restoration of our country. Opposition mayor killed in, in, in a city called Indu. This is serious. Okay? Many people are still coming. No internet, no electricity. This is from Cameroon inside itself, as they speak. The UN need to do something. People die every day in southern Cameroon. Every day. You mark you. AU beer cannot be more than you. Restoration. Needed. AU move in. The AU, the AU Secretary General should move in now. AU chairperson. Find out what are people saying about this state of affairs. Viewers, continue watching, continue contributing. This is your medium for Cameroonian. I have opened this for you. Let God help you one day and one day. The one day only, there will be salvation. God does not hide forever. Mr. Bia, 38 years is long enough for a, ch a person to produce 10 children. Why are you still on power, man? Hey! Why? And you have denied the people the other option. At least for us, we have, in Uganda, we have several options. <laughs> yes. So please, Mr. Bia, check your police, your intelligence. They are killing people. Thank you very much, viewers. This is Matanga Africa Perspective, a program which will be brought to you every day. We look at specific countries in Africa where there is trouble. We discuss it. We want you to continue the debate. It goes on. Should Cameroon needs restoration. Do you agree? Or do you don't agree? Call us from anywhere. Continue debating on the platform. We have put it there for you. We shall later on use your, uh, you know, posts and submissions as a study to which we can put before any international body that might in, like it. This station is for Africa with Africa by Africa for Africa. Thank you, my panel. Thank you, Tawish. Thank you, Jennifer Alera. Let's take we said, and the cameraman, we say goodbye.
Premium Automatic Solutions Limited, your one-stop shop for all your air operation services. We are a fully licensed air operator in Kenya that undertakes clearing and forwarding of cargo in and out of the East African Corridor. I'm Subramanian. I'm uh, the Director of Strategy for Multiple Solutions Limited, which is part of multiple group of companies. Uh, we have uh, multiple group is the largest uh, private logistics service provider in East and Central Africa region. We have recently started air cargo operation with our Boeing 737-200 freighter and Boeing 737-300 freighter based out of Jomo Kenyatta Airport, Nairobi. Our headquarters are in Mombasa. We have a regional office in Nairobi. We also have other branches in Kampala, Uganda, Juba in South Sudan, Singapore and that's all interconnecting borders. With our latest cargo plane Boeing B737-200 series aircraft, which is a fully cargo outfit with a capacity of carrying up to 15 tons, we will give you a world-class, personalized and timely experience in delivery of goods from one point to the other. We specialize in an executive service for customers requiring high levels of reliability, comfort and safety when traveling around Africa. Uh. We are authorized air operator uh, and we are operate scheduled flights, uh, cargo flights uh, to Middle East countries and also East and Central African regions. We have scheduled flights operating out of Jomo Kenyatta uh, to uh, Ras Al Khaimah, Muscat, Salala, Fujairah and Bahrain. Uh, for our Mogadishu business, uh, we, we have established partnership with uh, Golden Gate Cargo Services who do consolidation services for us out of Jomo Kenyatta Airport as well as Fujaira in Middle East. Um, the reason for you to choose Multiple Solutions Limited is because you have a one-stop shop. And what does that mean? Is that we can be able to give you enterprise solutions. You want us to do the documentation for you. We have a division that can be able to do that. You want us to do the warehousing part for you, we have a division that does that. Um, you want to combine um, different aspects of business, especially if you want to do sea to air. You want to bring your cargo to Mombasa and then airlift it to Juba. We can be able to offer you that solution. So what we do best at Multiple Solution is to tailor make solutions for you um, that accommodates your needs. Multiple Solutions Limited, your logistics partner of first choice.